Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 4. Today we're going to be doing my review and breakdown of Episode 1 and Episode 2 of Season 4. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos later this year. Okay guys, this is exciting. Superman Lois just aired its first two episodes of the final season. We have to talk about it because there is so much to break down in these first two episodes. I've literally got a long list of notes, so we're going to go through the episodes chronologically, obviously starting with episode one. But first things first, let's give my thoughts and opinions on how the season has started. I think it started really strong. I like these episodes a lot. I'm really into it. Obviously, it's been a long time since season three finished. It's been over a year. And I like where they restarted it, you know, they go back to Superman and Doomsday fighting on the moon. I love that shot of Superman's torn cape floating in space with the earth in the background. I think it's just such an amazing shot. And then you got the actual fight. It looks great. The CGI is solid despite all the budget cuts. And you have returning characters like Sarah in episode 2. You also have General Lane in episode 1. So they're bringing back people in a good way and I like what they've done so far and so just overall I think the story is really ramping up it started well with Lex going after Lois Lois is almost like the main character right now since Tyler is only involved in the flashbacks playing Clark and playing Superman of course and he's not that much involved apart from obviously his stuff in episode one and then him being the dead body at the end of episode one as well so let's go ahead and break down episode one and then we'll get into episode two chronologically bit by bit and talk about everything so we start with suspenseful music as we see superman's destroyed cape floating in space which is then followed by the superman lois logo and so then we skip back to the kent farm we have john jordan and lois who try to listen into where General Lane is. Now, you have to remember General Lane was kidnapped at the end of the season because he was talked into going on a date and going on dating apps by Jordan because obviously General Lane hasn't been with anyone for a long time, but it turns out that person, Gretchen, is actually working for Lex. So we do find him in this episode and he is with that person as well as Otis and Lex Luthor at points. And he does manage to break out at one point. However, things don't work out as he is sent to an early grave whilst he is still alive. It is brutal, it is dark, and this season is definitely going to be the darkest season of Superman Lois so far. And so Lex arrives in Smallville and he's bought this hotel across from the Gazette, which is a bold, bold move. He wants to look over Lois's every single move. He is not letting her breathe. He wants to be absolutely breathing down her neck this whole time and scaring her. And I mean, it does a good job at that. Like it's pretty intimidating with Lex just across the street. And so we meet Amanda McCoy, who is a big character in the comics. She's known for figuring out Superman's real identity. And in the show, she's actually a big ally for Lex and Lex cares little for the company right now, but she has been looking after everything in his absence since he went to prison all those many years ago and so Lex is still looking for Elizabeth his daughter which was set up last season she does not want to see him because she turned her back on him after she found out what he was and the fact that he went to prison as well and this is the reason that Lex is actually hunting after Lois if you guys forgot because he thinks that Lois is the root cause for this for his daughter turning her back on him. So we also have flashbacks in this episode. We have the first flashback that is with Lois and Clark and it's just after he told Lois that he's Superman. Now for a minute there I had to readjust and I was like okay this is a flashback I know that and this was just after that scene that we previously seen with him flying up in the air and holding the car showing Lois that he has powers that he is Superman and so we see a continuation of that it's a sweet moment as we look back in the past obviously with the impending death of Superman also you have to realize at this point in the episode we're only a bit of a way in and he is not dead yet so she is already thinking about 
their past together because obviously she's contemplating everything. And so Lois is still hoping for Clark to return, which then cuts to Doomsday fighting Superman in space. We've seen this scene at the San Diego Comic Con sneak peek that they released. And so there is a ton of slow motion as they fight to the death. The CGI is really solid and there are a number of shots that are truly going to be iconic. We've already seen them with Doomsday and Superman face to face. But back in Smallville, we have Lex who shows up at the Gazette to confront Lois face to face. And Lois is taken aback by this, but she's also feisty and she's willing to fight back against Lex. And I have to mention by this point, I don't think she's taken him that seriously. Like, I think the death of Superman and her father being kidnapped is definitely crossing the line into oh shit, he's actually serious about this. Like, he's willing to do absolutely anything to get what he wants. And I think she's realized this by this point, but she is still willing to fight back against him because obviously she knows where she stands. And Lex says Lois will be afraid of him after what he's going to do. But after this, we have more flashbacks. We go back to the Daily Planet where we get talk about Lex's weapons being used by Intergang. This is back when... Onomatopoeia and also Bruno Mannheim were involved and this is when Lex is about to be sent to prison and Clark is unfazed in this scene in the flashback about being shot by Kryptonite which is on the rise at the time but it's not as widespread as it is in the future and so he says he will never make Lois a widow which is obviously foreshadowing what is about to come and I do like the flashbacks because they all have a purpose and this specifically teased exactly what was about to happen shortly after. And so meanwhile, we have Lex who sits down with John and Jordan at the diner. It's intimidating, it's scary, and John calls him a straight up psycho. And obviously that gets under Lex's skin. And he explains that he's after his daughter who turned her back on him after Lois falsely imprisoned them. So he's clearly up to something. He doesn't want to just ruin Lois's life. He wants to get to Jordan and Jonathan in some way, even if it is just one of them. If he can get to them and turn one of the kids against Lois, that is going to be truly payback for what happened to him and his daughter. And I have to mention in another flashback, there is Lex with a weird ass beard and a weird haircut like he looks completely different he looks very 80s it's a strange look but it's cool and it's funny to see what he looked like and the fact that he wasn't as antagonistic back then despite having a similar level of power and just in this flashback he seemed to be on okay terms with Lois despite Lois actually trying to expose him and falsely imprison him despite him pleading to her saying this is false Bruno Mannheim and Onomatopoeia, they made this up, they altered this, and you're not reporting the facts, but Lois is dead set on trying to lock Lex up. Now let's move on to talk about General Lane. Obviously, Jordan does eventually figure out where he is. He flies over to where they are with Lois, and Lois does her best Batman impression, saying, where is he? As they take out Otis and Gretchen, and they save General Lane from being buried alive in the dirt and that is thanks to Jordan. And so later after this, Otis says to Lex, and this is a very important line, Lois Lane showed up with that kid people are calling Superboy. So that is our first mention of Superboy. I'm really wondering, did they actually plan to do this in season four? Did they plan to make him full on Superboy this season, give him a suit and everything that will hopefully eventually happen this season or was that for a later season and they've had to you know fast track this and, and try and get it in in season four and at the end of the episode we do eventually see Superman's death and we saw this in the sneak peek recently but we get the complete version so Clark makes one final stand as he uses his full force but Doomsday is way too powerful and his heat vision is barely effective and he slams him into an asteroid, and that's when you see Superman dead. He is floating in space with his suit torn and tattered, he's got gashes everywhere, and Doomsday flies him back to Earth, 
and that's at the point where Jordan realizes and everyone goes over to the middle of Smallville and that is where Doomsday has landed with Superman being dragged by him holding his head. It is dark, it is brutal and after idling for a bit Doomsday drops Superman's dead body on the ground and he is lying face first and Lois and the boys slowly walk up and Lois flips in around and it is truly, truly terrifying because Superman's heart has been ripped out by Doomsday. It is brutal. I have no idea how this was approved by the CW because it is gory. It is not what we're used to seeing. So I'm sure you guys were shocked. I was shocked when I watched it too. But seeing their reactions, it was so devastating. It was heartbreaking and it's just really, really traumatic for them seeing their father and obviously Lois's husband being dropped dead on the ground by a monster who has just ripped his heart out. It's the darkest you could get. Also just after this where we see the heart of Superman which has been gifted by Doomsday to Lex, Amanda McCoy gives Lex a device to keep it in and there is a reference to Brainiac, which is pretty cool. I don't think we're going to see Brainiac this season, but I like the little Easter egg there. And I should mention one of my favorite moments of the entire episode is after Lois turns Clark's body around and you see the shock on her face. But that's when we cut to a tender flashback to their key moments, which is a typical Superman Lois style montage that is so sweet and so perfect, looking through the good and the bad times over the last three or four seasons. This is what Superman Lois does best. It really, really tugs at your heartstrings and they really know how to edit a montage with very emotive music. So that pretty much does it for episode one. Let's move on to episode two because this starts where episode one ends off with Lois looking at the hotel and we have the locals from Smallville, there are some notable faces that you're going to see popping up throughout the season. They do have talking roles, but they're not that important. So they're just going to be the local Smallville townspeople that you will see here and there. And so you see it from their perspective of Doomsday dropping Superman in front of Lois and the boys. And their reactions to Superman's death says a lot and obviously at this point it got me worried i was like has his identity been exposed do they all know that he has a very very close relationship with lois and the boys and this is at the point where sarah and lana show up and they tell everyone to give lois space to be with superman who is supposedly a really good friend and that's why she's so emotional but obviously that doesn't say anything about the boys but there is little time to mourn as jordan is forced to take superman to the fortress as he begs Clark's Kryptonian mother to try and save him, but she is unsure how she can save him without a heart, and she obviously hints there could be a way to save him if we get a heart, and potentially we could revive him, because he is basically put into almost like a stasis in an altered state of existence, that's how he described it, and so he's placed into suspended animation that they used to use to rehabilitate Kryptonian criminals. So that is some Kryptonian tech that's in the fortress that is obviously going to come in very handy. But as I said, Lana and Sarah are involved in this episode and they show up to the Kent family farm and Lois explains how Lex is involved in all of this and that he created a monster to kill Superman and that Lois blames herself for not giving up journalism after Lex's threats, which she really didn't take very seriously despite her knowing how brutal and how direct he can be and Lala reveals she wants to help but Lois warns her not to help because it could have a dire effect on her family if she is to change anything if she is to get in Lex's way because he's already proved he's willing to do anything in order to get what he wants and so the next scene after this we have Sarah and Jonathan they're talking, we got John who is unsure there is enough time and he doesn't trust Jordan as a superhero, as someone to go after Lex and we see that in this episode, he's hot headed and willing to make brash decisions that can easily get him in dire situations that he finds himself in this episode and this is all to do with Lex of course 
And so, meanwhile, we got Lex, who remains in Smallville, and Amanda McCoy returns once again, questioning his motives behind everything, and she sees it's personal for him. She is the only one that is questioning him, despite staying loyal to him. At least it's nice to get that kind of perspective, to see someone that is a bit closer with him, rather than just seeing Lex as a pure villain. And next up, we got Jordan, who is still trying to track Doomsday, who is still around despite in the comic, normally in the death of Superman, Superman sacrifices himself but also kills Doomsday at the same time. You saw that in Batman vs Superman, but Superman Lois is doing its own version of that story. So Doomsday is still around and they need to defeat him at some point. And another major part of this episode is Jordan, as I said, he's super brash and he goes after Lex. He confronts him in a bar and that's because he believes he's got his father's heart. He thinks he's got Superman's heart and his brash decisions cause Lex to actually step and destroy Clark's heart at the end of the episode. It is disgusting, it's gory and it's shocking. I mean if that doesn't prove that this is going to be like one of the darkest seasons of any Arrowverse show, I don't know what else you need to see, right? You've got the death of Superman, you've got him stepping on his heart, you've got Doomsday dragging him around by his head. And I'm sure you're going to see a lot more in episode 3 and episode 4 because Doomsday still hasn't been defeated by the end of episode 2. And so we've got Lois also writing the article. She is coming to terms with what's happened. She is going to reveal to the world the death of Superman. And that's the title of our article, which is obviously very fitting based on the comic book that this story is inspired by. But then we have one of the best scenes of the episode it is one of the biggest twists. And that is because Lex tells Lois that he knows she's married to Superman. And he just never lined up the dots until now. And he says he knows that Superboy is her son. And then he looks at Jonathan and says, do you have powers too? And obviously at this moment, Lois is incredibly scared now that Lex has figured everything out. As at any moment he could expose their family to the public and everything they've worked for over the last however many years could come undone. And she says she's not ready, not yet, for all of this to go down. And so meanwhile we have Lana who tells Lois that Chuck, a local man, figured out their connection to Superman and the fact that Lois is Superman's husband just like Lex has figured out and the fact that the kids are Superman's sons. But luckily for Lois, Chuck is a nice guy and he's not going to reveal anything, he's going to keep it close to himself. After this is actually one of the best scenes of the entire episode where you have Jordan hearing Superman's heart and he is obviously in a trap. You can tell from the start of the trap, even Jonathan warned him. And this is all while Sarah is in the diner occupying Lex whilst Jonathan also goes to Lex's place and the tension ramps up as you cut between the two, you cut with Sarah, then Lex has disappeared, you're like, where is he, what's he doing? And at that moment you get Lois who receives a call and she is forced to choose between Jonathan and Jordan, who is her favorite son, who will she save? And in that moment, she chooses Jonathan and that really was quite shocking and it really showed Lex at the height of his powers trying to get under Lois's skin because this is definitely going to come back to bite her because this is not just a throwaway scene, we're definitely going to go back to that, I'm pretty sure of that. And to round off the episode, everyone is back at the Kent family farm after suffering through everything that they did in this episode and they talk about how they thought Superman, well their father, would be invincible and the fact that they're living in a world without him and what are they supposed to do now and that's something that they're going to have to grapple with over the next couple of episodes while superman remains dead again we will see him at some point returning from the dead so they're going to be very happy about that let's just say that but to end the episode we have lex back in for general lane as he's the only one that knows about the true whereabouts of lex's daughter and he is buying a farm also as well as a new HQ in Smallville so that he can solely operate out of the town. And the final scene of the episode is at the fortress where Lois and the boys go to say their goodbyes to their dad and obviously to Lois's husband. But it turns out that Clark has left a hologram of his own 
in the fortress for them just in case. So it's a bittersweet moment because you get to see him, but it's not actually him, it's a hologram just like his mum from Krypton. He says, Lois, boys, I was going to tell you sooner, but you got sick. And he ends it with, out there, it's just going to have to be the three of you. Obviously referring to if he is gone, and that is why he has created this. So it's interesting, Superman almost preempted this. I guess he just had a feeling he had to do something just in case because obviously he's been involved in many, many battles throughout the years that have been seriously deadly and life-threatening to him. So I guess you always got to have a contingency plan. But yeah, what a couple of episodes to start off season four. I'm really, really looking forward to all the next episodes. So if you guys enjoyed this review and breakdown video, again, this was for multiple episodes, so it's a bit of a longer video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to make it as comprehensive and as interesting as possible. Obviously, I have my notes that I'm going off of just to get everything right and then breaking it down, analyzing things and, and talking about the potential effect on future episodes that it's going to have. But that does it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Let me know what did you think of the two hour season premiere of the final season of Superman Lois down in the comments below. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. We'll have a episode 3 trailer breakdown video in the evening tomorrow in anticipation for episode 3 that is coming out next Monday. So thank you guys so much for watching. Click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.